فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are uh, in the explanation of the kitab دفع إهام للضراب عن آيات الكتاب written by الشيخ العلامة محمد الأمين ابن محمد المختار ابن عبد القادر الجكني الشنقيطي رحمه الله إن شاء الله تعالى we're now going to go into the book and we're going to start with the مقدمة in which the author started with and then we'll go into Sulbul Kitab we will go into the book itself inshallah ta'ala without any further ado inshallah ta'ala our brother Sa'ad is going to read inshallah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad khatam al nabiyyin wa ashraf al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawm al din the author rahimahullah he started his book by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim by saying Bismillah in the name of Allah ar-Rahman the most merciful and ar-Rahim the most gracious starting with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is following the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the messenger's sunnah was when he would write he would start by saying Bismillah Many of us, we send emails and we forget this sunnah. To write Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim on the email. Even if that email is going to a disbeliever. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the murasalat and the letters he would send to the disbelievers, like Hiraqla Azim al-Rum, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, min Muhammad Rasulillah, ila Hiraqla Azim al-Rum, aslim taslam, yu'tik Allahu ajraka marratayn. So he started his letter by saying, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. So this is a sunnah, fi'liyyah, a sunnah of the Prophet's action, in which one should adopt and should implement. Um, there are some scholars who said that there is not only a sunnah fi'liyyah, but rather there is also a sunnah qawliyyah, meaning the Prophet specifically instructed that one should start uh, his letters uh, uh, with the Basmala or he should start his affairs with the Basmala and that is the hadith which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said <laughs> and this hadith scholars have within themselves discussed its authenticity some have weakened it and some have strengthened it some scholars are of the opinion that it's authentic and others have weakened it the ones who have weakened it, they've weakened it for two reasons. They've weakened it due to the senad, the chain of narration is incorrect and it's weak. And others, and the other reason, sorry, in why they weaken that narration is because the hadith, the wording of it is, it has idrab, it's contradicting. Sometimes it comes in the wording of fawa abtar, and sometimes it comes in the word fawa ajdam, sometimes it comes in the word, so the many words have occurred. And they are wordings that are conflating and that can't be combined and brought together. But they are wordings that are contradicting one another. So they weakened it. Some scholars know they considered it to be authentic and sound. And those who have considered it to be sound, they've said that we have now got two proofs that one should start with the basmala. The Prophet's action, which is Sunnah Fi'liya, and the Prophet's statement, which is this hadith in which they consider to be authentic. And there are a third group of scholars who said that the hadith is weak and it is not authentic. But even that though it's weak, we will still implement it. Because virtuous acts, if a narration comes in a virtuous action, an action which it pushes us to do, then that narration is taken 
as long as it meets a criteria or a condition. And that condition mean that condition being that this one of the conditions is that this ruling has basis in the religion. If it has basis within the religion, and it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sanctioned and legislated, if a weak narration comes to support it. For instance, a hadith comes and says, anybody who prays Salatul Duha will enter from whichever of the eight doors of Jannah he wishes. Now that hadith, I've just made it up here. So it doesn't exist. But does Salatul Duha have basis in our religion? But what's this hadith going to do? Is going to urge a person to go more and be excited and more huh? to pray in Salatul Duha. So some scholars, they said that is permissible to take it and implement it. It's permissible to implement it. And they also condition that you don't attribute it to the Prophet. You don't attribute it to the Prophet. But if you narrate it and you tell the people about it, then they say it is from the Fada'ilul A'mal and as I said in my other lesson of the Sharh of Kitab al faraid al Bahiyya fi Nadmi Qawa'id al Fiqhiyya, I said that one can find more explanation from Ibn Hajar and also Jamaluddin al Qasim in his Kitab Qawa'id al Tahdith. Also Sheikh al Albani in his Kitab Qamus al Bida. That book of his they all, is also brought in there and it's right, it's in there, you will find it. That's the best mala. Now, one has to keep in mind that the best mala was the Prophet's sunnah to start with it when it was writing. But he wouldn't start with the best mala when it came to sermons and, and reminders. He would start with the hamdalah, alayhi salatu wasalam. So Imam al-Bukhari implemented that. And Imam al-Bukhari did not start his book with the hamdalah. He started with the best mala because it's a book. It's writing. So he did not start with Inna alhamdulillah or anything like that. Because Inna alhamdulillah is when the khutab, sermons, a person is doing, they start with that. And on the Friday or a sermon, a person shouldn't say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They should say Inna alhamdulillah or the hamdalah. So the author, he started his book by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the alameen, the heavens, the universe. So alameen is jam'ah, universes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're praising him for what? For a sifa which is muta'addiya or sifa which is, uh, sifa which is lazima. A sifa characteristics which is his. Meaning Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he is being praised for subhanahu wa ta'ala for being the Rabb, the Lord of what? The Alameen. And last lesson in our sharh of kitab, Al-Fara'idu Al-Bahiyya fi nazmi qawa'id al-fiqiyya, we mention that the word Rabb, it comes in many meanings. But the meaning that it carries here right now is what? Malik, the king of the universe, the Sayyid, the master of the universe. So the word Rabb is a master. It is the one who nurtures things. And he makes it grow. The child is born and he's nothing. As Allah said in the Quran, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'an. Allah brought you out of the womb of your mothers and you knew nothing. Then Allah wa ta'ala, he nurtured you. He gave you tarbiyah, which basically made you grow and grow and you've become what you are. You start to realize things, you start to learn things which you didn't know. This is what a Rabb does. He is the Khaliq, he created you. He is the Malik, he is the one who runs your affairs. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's a king and he's the Mudabbir. The Mudabbir means the one who runs your affairs and he's your king, supreme lord. Bidalik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he takes the soul of every single person and every single body is dead and there's no one who exists, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to the people, who are all dead, there's no one alive. Allah says, Liman al mulk al Who owns the kingdom? Who is a king? And because everybody is dead, no one is able to respond. And then Allah wa ta'ala, He responds to Himself because there's no one to respond. And then Allah says, Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar. 
a malik, a king, is for him alone. Lillahi, a khas bihi, specifically his. No one shares it with him. So the malik and the king is truly who? The one whose kingdom does not perish. And he doesn't go. And all of us, we saw what took place in recent uh, events. Individuals who were rulers of their countries and they were kings and they were looked up to and the presidents or prime ministers, some of them died being dragged on the ground. And that shows you Allah wa ta'ala, he gives kingdom to whoever he wills. He makes a king whoever he wills. And he takes it from whoever he wills. Because he is the Rabb of the Alameen. He runs everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalatu. So because of that, and because of his power, and because he's the Rabb, he's praiseworthy for that. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wassalatu. Wassalamu. Salah means, there are many opinions, but we're taking the Qawlu Rajih, is... The view of Abu Aliyat al-Rayahi, which Bukhari brought it mu'allakan in his sahih bisigat al-jazm lakin. Bukhari brought it in his sahih um, without a chain, uh, but he brought it in a uh, affirming manner, in a manner where he affirms it, uh, Imam Bukhari, which basically is Allah. it is that Allah praises the Prophet in the gathering of the angels. High above, Allah is praising the Prophet. That's what the word Salah means. There are other opinions of scholars that say, no, Salah means Rahmah. Salah means Rahmah. And Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, did not accept that. Alamat Ibn al-Qayyim did not accept that the word Salah means Rahmah. And he said they are two different things. And he expanded on that in his book. He expanded on that in his, in his book. And we've mentioned this so many times. Does anyone know what book it is? Which kitab of his it was? Jala'ul Afham fi fadli salati ala khayri al-anam. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions it in that book of his. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And by the way, that book is written only on the issue of fi fadli salah. To the virtue of sending salutation on the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The virtues that are with it. Because a lot of the times this concept is pushed forward which is the Wahhabis, they are against the Salli of the Prophet. They don't like Salli to be done. Just because we've said to not specify the Salah on a particular day, in a particular place, and that the Salah should be done unrestrictedly, every time and every place. Huh? Every time. And of course, every place, unless those places which are not legislated. The person just says the Salah of the Prophet. What we're saying no to is the restrict, restricting it at a particular place. But the accusation is thrown back at us is that you guys don't like the Salah of the Prophet. And you're, you hate the Prophet Salah to be sent down on him. That is lying, that's accusation. And many people follow that trait and that path. When you say to some people, don't go against the rulers. It is not permissible. What do they say? Oh, don't say, Akhi, this is not jihad. This is not jihad. What do they say to you? You are against jihad. You don't like jihad. Just because the conditions of jihad haven't been met, doesn't mean I'm against jihad. So you find that trait are very common in the people. That they try to divert the issue from the mawridun niza, the place where the discussion is going on. It's taken off and it's made into it seem to be something else. Ala kulli hal, Ibn al-Qayyim wrote a book and it was a long time ago since I read it, but I think he brings 34 different Sahabas who've narrated the virtue of a Salah on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm sure it's 30, but it's 34 or 37, one of those two. Virtue, uh, hadith that have come pertaining to sending Salah on the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Anyways, that book of Ibn Al-Qayyim, he tackles the issue of is Salah and Rahmah the same? And he goes and mentions that they are not the same. And he brings 10 different ways which they are not the same. 10 different ways. That the Salah and the Rahmah are two different things. One of the most apparent one is Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah, which is, Ula'ika alayhim salawatu min rabbihim wa rahmah. Ula'ika upon those is what? Ula'ika alayhim salawatun. Salutation. Warahmah. Look what Allah did in this verse. Allah wa ta'ala 
he mentioned salawat, and then he mentioned rahma. And in the Arabic language, the qa'ida is, is what? Wa al waw. The waw here, which is between the two words, fi asli al lughati taqtadi al mughayara. That it originated in its essence, the waw, it shows differences. Another example would be what? Al ladina yahmiluna al arsha, the ones who are carrying the throne. The angels that are carrying the throne. Look what Allah says in the ayah. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ And those who are around it. Just because the word wow is used here, وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ We have realized that the angels that are carrying the throne are not the angels that are around the throne. There are two different types of angels here. Just that word by itself shows us this. جَاءَ مُحَمَّدٌ وَزَيْدٌ We know Muhammad and Zayd are two different people. Huh? The wow in its essence, it shows us that these two are two different things. So here we have ulaika alayhim salawatun min rabbihim wa rahma. So Ibn al-Qayyim says salah and rahma can't be the same. Ibn Uthaymin discusses this issue further and he says there can be a way to re reconcile between the view of Ibn al-Qayyim here and the view of the majority of the scholars who say that the salah means rahma. And Ibn al-Qayyim, he expands on it in his, in his works. Alayhi rahmatullah. So, wassalatu, we said the opinion that we've chosen is the opinion Ibn al-Qayyim chose. Which is Abu Aliyah, who is from the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar. Yeah, his view, it suffices us. He, he's an imam in a'immati salaf. And he was a man who knew the Quran. So the author, what did he say? Wassalatu. We say, thanaullahi, Allah praising the Prophet in the gathering of his angels. Wassalamu and peace. Look what he done. He, he brought together Salah and Salam. Both of them. And he combined between the two of them. And the reason is because this is following the ayah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasliman. We've been commanded both. Allah did he not say sallu alayhi send salutation on him wa sallimu and send peace. So Salah and Salam. That's why the Sheikh brought both of them. On who lakin? Ala Nabiyina, our Prophet. Ala, ala Nabiyina Muhammad. Nabiyina Muhammadin is a badal. Because Muhammad, Nabi is Muhammad. It's the same person. On our Prophet. Who? Muhammad. Muhammad and Nabi, uh, Nabi, uh, Nabi here and Muhammad are the same. Khatami. And you can say kha. Timi, you can put a kasra on the ta or you can put a fatha on the ta. Whichever those two ways you want to read, you can read it. With alika, the qira'ah of the Quran is ma kana muhammadun aba ahadin nir rijalikum walakin rasulallahi wa kha taman nabiyin. And it's also read as wa kha timan nabiyin. Both qira'ah are recitations that are correct. Ala nabiyina on our prophet. Which one? Muhammadin. That's the only prophet we have in this ummah. Who we follow. And there are prophets before that, no doubt, which we believe in. What is he? He's the seal of all prophets. He's the what? Seal of all prophets. He is the seal of all prophets. Alayhi salatu. He basically all prophets, he, he sealed them all. So when we say Khataman Nabiyin and Khatiman Nabiyina, the difference is. He sealed all the prophets, or he was sealed with all the prophets. That's the two different meanings, and they both mean the same. وَأَشْرَفِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And he is the most honorable from the messengers that were sent. The Prophet وسلم, from all the messengers and the prophets that were sent, who is the best? Our Prophet is. عليه الصلاة والسلام. And Allah tells us in the Quran that the prophets are not all the same. تِلْكَ الرُّسُلُ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ these prophets that we have sent, minhum man kallam Allah, one who Allah spoke about them, uh, spoke to him directly, such as Nabiullah Musa, and some of them, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he has given them virtue and superiority over the others. Prophets are, are not the same. They are not all the, they are not all the same. So how do we take, how do we take, I'm aware, do we take the ruling of when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't raise me over Yunus ibn Matta, don't put me above him. 
when he said don't raise me over him and we have here Allah tabarak wa ta'ala saying tilka rusul faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd prophets and messengers we gave virtue some over the other how do you reconcile between that huh humility okay but that would mean that this humility gives a ruling huh? Mm -mm. He said, don't raise me above Yunus ibn Matta. The ruling, the, it means, don't try to compete prophets with one another. Fulan is better than Fulan, and look, he did this one, he did this one, not in that angle. Not to try to uh, make prophets look like they are two uh, groups of fighting with one another. Huh? And everyone's trying to say, oh, this Prophet, I feel like this. Yeah. But generally speaking, I Nabi Allah Muhammad, and I say you do wala di Adam, wala fakhr. I am the master of the children of Nabi Allah Adam. And I'm not boasting, he said. Wala fakhr. Alayhi salatu salam. So he's the best. Alayhi salatu salam. But there's a question is he the best from what Allah created? With the angels involved? Is he the best with the jinns involved? That which we don't, that we don't have knowledge of. We don't affirm it, nor do we negate it. But from the humans, we know. We know. So he's the best of messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam. Wa ala alihi and his family. Al is his what? His family. Does, does his wives fall under his al? No doubt they do. No doubt they do. وَلِذَلِكَ If you look at the siyaq and the ayat of Surah Al-Ahzab, if you look at it, إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجز أهل البيت ويطهركم ويطهركم تطهيرا. إنما يريد الله الله wants to purify you. إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجز. Oh, the family of the Prophet Allah wants to what? He wants to purify you. If you look at the verses before that, what do you find? يا نساء النبي لستنك أحد من النساء إن اتقيتنا فلا تقطعنا بالقول قول فيتم الذي في قلبي مرض وقلنا قول معروفة. وقرنا في بيوتكن ولا تبرجنا تبرج الجاهلية الأولى وقمنا الصلاة آتينا ولا the ayat before it is talking to the prophet's wife the same page if you look at it that shows you that the wives of the prophet they fall under وعلى آله they fall under it ابتداء first وصحبه صحبه صحبه is what his companions and companions are what my beloved brothers and sisters Companions are مَنْ لَقِيَ النَّبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مُؤْمِنًا بِهِ وَمَاتَ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ وَلَوْ تَخَلَّ الْتَرِدَّةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ صَحْ They are the ones who have met the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام They what? They met the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام مُؤْمِنًا بِهِ in a state of Iman Even if they apostated but they came back to Islam again Does that take them out of being companions? Huh? Will that take them out of being companions? That won't be. Why? Because, pay attention. The reason is because companionship is a virtue. And it's a righteous deed. Is it not? It's a righteous deed. And a righteous deed does not, for example, if a person came with Hajj, if a person came with Umrah, if a person came with Jihad fi sabilillah and Salah, and a person came with acts of obedience. And that individual died and, and apostates. But before they, leave, before they die, they come back to Islam. All of those righteous actions which they have done, does it come back for them? Or does it nullify as soon as they apostate? As soon as they apostate, does all their righteous actions go? Or does their righteous actions go... Or does their righteous actions go after they die? Huh? What's the evidence for, for that? If that is the view? And if we, I'm going to ask you guys next lesson, inshallah ta'ala, I want you to find out this. I know um, I have to give the answer now because I'm explaining something. But the answer is no, it doesn't nullify straight away. It only nullifies and it goes after the person is dead. As for whilst the person is alive, the actions does not nullify. It does not. It does not nullify. 
But what's the evidence? Is what we want from you all, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, next lesson. Wa ala alihi and the Prophet's family. Wa sahbi and his companions. Wa man tabi'ahum and those who follow them. Bi ihsanin with good. Those who follow the path of the Prophet. And they take the path of the companions. And they tread on their path. So we are not, we are not in any way, form or shape the messengers. Nor are we the companions of the Prophet sallallahu So the only thing that we have and we can become is وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ And those who follow them in good. And those who follow them in good. وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينَ And this is from the ayah وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So what is it? وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ The companions, and there are two types of companions, the muhajirin and the ansar, and those who follow them in good. May also peace and salutation be upon them. So look how many people are getting peace and salutation. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his companions, and his family, and those who follow the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and his family in good. Until what? The Day of Judgment. إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَرِثَ اللَّهُ الْأَرْضَ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا Until Allah conquers and takes over this earth and everyone on it. May that be upon everybody. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah, the Sheikh goes on to say again. Praise is due to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Alladhi the one, khatama rusula The one who he sealed all the prophets off with who? Bihad al nabi al kareem With this prophet. He sealed, concealed what? All the prophets with who? This prophet, which is Nabiullah Muhammad. Alayhi min Allahi salatu wa taslim. May Allah's salutation and peace be upon our prophet Muhammad. Allahumma ameen. So praises to the Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. The one who has sealed, alladhi khatama rusula He has sealed all the prophets. Are, there's no prophet anymore. The Qadianis are kuffar. They have gone against the Qur'an, the clear text of the Qur'an, which is مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدُ الْأَبَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ And the Prophet's hadith in Sahih Bukhari لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي There is no Prophet after me. There is no Prophet after me. So our Prophet is the final Prophet. He is the final Prophet. May Allah's peace and salutation be upon him. That's good. So who's the final messenger? Our Prophet Muhammad Is there any Prophet after him or any messenger that's going to come after him? Good. كَمَا خَتَمَ الْكُتُبَ السَّمَاوِيَةِ بِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ The same way Allah, He sealed all the books with this Qur'an. So our messenger is the final messenger. There is no messenger going to come after our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also our Qur'an is the only scripture, um, it's the final scripture that came from the Samawat, came from Allah. Are you with me? Torah, Injil, Zabur, all of them are abrogated. This Qur'an has sealed all of it. The Shaykh is saying this. وَهَدَ النَّاسَ And Allah guided the people. Bima fihi in that which is in this Quran. Allah guided them. Here the guidance is what? Since since is an nasa, which is a jins, yastagriku, it's a jins, istigraq. It encompasses all of human mankind. The hidayah has to be here, what? Because not every single human being is guided. Hidayah to dalalati wal ishad. In Allah, through this Quran, He has shown everyone. بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ Allah has guided, He has shown the path to all of mankind with the verses that are in it with dhikri and the remembrance which is the Qur'an, it's another name for the Qur'an and also the sunnah and the sunnah al-hakim that is full of wisdom the shaykh here when I looked at the different different nusakhs, this nusakh of this nusakh of Dal Al Alim al Fawaid, 
they considered this part of the statement of the Sheikh وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ as though the Sheikh brought, his, brought it as an ayah meaning as though he brought it as an ayah and others, others have kind of shown it as though it's a what? it's an iqtibas meaning the Sheikh brought it as though his own words and did not allude to it being from the Quran which is when a person speaks and they use and they borrow the Quran into their speech without saying that this is the word of Allah just like he did right now وَهَدَ النَّاسَ بِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ وَالذِّكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ is a verse from the Quran but the Sheikh did not use it as a verse from the Quran so here وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ is it as though he's used it as ayah from the Quran or has he done what is known in Balagha as iqtibas iqtibas meaning making the Quran your own speech as Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah done and I use this as an example a lot which is إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ إِظْهَارَ دِينِهِ أَقَامَ مَنْ يُعَارِضْهُ فَيُحِقَّ الْحَقَّ بِكَلِمَاتِهِ ثُمَّ يَقْضَفَ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ فَيَدْمَغُهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقٌ If Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wants to bring his religion apparent out to the open he brings out a person who stands against it and then Allah brings another person to rebuttal and to debunk his arguments and his falsehood and then he becomes destroyed and the truth becomes clear all this is Quran, ayat from the Quran he took but he made it into his own wordings this is called iqtibas and of course there are discussions amongst the ulama and the people of knowledge can someone do that and is he allowed to do it and I think that itself is a discussion that should be spoken about elsewhere وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words are what? Full of truth. صِدْقًا فِي الْأَخْبَارِ وَعَدْلًا فِي الْأَحْكَامِ Allah's words are truthful in every single thing Allah has informed us of. Everything Allah has told us about. Everything Allah Taala told us that has taken place. And everything Allah told us that's going to happen, all of it is true. One does not doubt it. And what type of sidq is this, my beloved brothers and sisters? It is sidqun. It is the belief that a person has, which is sidq jazim. It is the unwavering conviction. A person believes without any doubt that Allah Taala said this, and so this has to be the truth. He does not doubt it the slightest. Allah Taala, what does He tell us in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah? ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. And we're going to come to this ayah. It's the second ayah which He brings in this book that some people try to bring contradiction from. لا ريب فيه. There's no doubt in it. No doubt in it. Allah says, إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا the believers are what? Who believe in Allah wa ta'ala and they come with righteous actions. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا And they don't have what? Doubt. They are full of conviction and they believe in it. They know what Allah has said is the truth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَدْلًا And they also know Allah's legislations, Allah's rules that He has set are just. Just. So you don't find any feminism. The sister believes, has Allah said this? Has Allah permitted it? Wallahi, he knows it and he's just. 